And I was gonna put on a, a heart bar just to show you how much you can manipulate the, 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 the heels, you know, by putting frog pressure. And there's a frog support heart bar for a horse with a collapsed foot, and there's a heart bar shoe for a laminitic horse. Okay, and uh, you know, they are two different uses, okay? With these guys, you can put quite a lot of frog pressure on them because the frog just manipulates up between the heels. You notice those horses that, are, that when you get x-rays and the x-ray, the, either the coffin was flat in the, co in the foot or it's derotated. If you go and put frog pressure on those, you'll see the, the, the coffin bone lifted up. If you, if you wedge them, they end up, the frog drops through more and the heels look worse. If you go and put a frog support on, you can put a bunch of frog pressure on and what you do through all the soft tissue by lifting the digital cushion, you lift the wings of the coffin bone. If I'm putting the heart bar on, I go even further than this. I wouldn't have bothered trimming the sides much, but I trim the top flat. By trimming the top flat, it gives me a bigger surface area. I'll do that with a laminitic horse as well. I'll, put a, I'll trim the top of the frog flat, so it gives me maximum surface area for my heart bar. Okay, there's no point trimming it to a V and then putting a little... Okay, so, so it's thinking how you're trimming your foot for the heart bar. When would I put a wedge on? Okay. Not never, that's a wrong word, but you have to have a guideline. When we looked at that foot, after we'd taken away the excess heel, I'm being very careful how I say it, I took away the excess heel, normalized, normalized it. it, I didn't lower it, I normalized it. The, when we looked at the horse standing, it had a pretty good past an angle, didn't he? And his leg was vertical. And if a horse's leg is vertical and it's got a good past an angle, it doesn't need wedging. If a leg is vertical, and it's got a, a broken back past an angle, it can do with a wedge. If the leg is behind vertical, and it's got a broken back past an angle, it's definitely still got too much heel. Okay, so if, if the leg is behind vertical, you'll normally have too much heel. Okay, but if the leg's vertical, that's where, you, where it should be, because that's where a leg should be, it's vertical. Measuring. I measured from the toe to where I want the heel to be, toe to where I want the heel to be, and they were five and a half each. So I went 11, plus two for the bend in the shoe, okay? But the foot is also five and a half wide. And for me, it's a very wide foot, very, very wide foot. It's about a quarter inch wider than I say, think it should be. If the foot becomes more cupped as we put the heart bar on, it's gonna get narrower, isn't it? Because if we push the frog up and we push the sole up, the sides have got to come in. But right now, it's flat. So we got, I've added an extra quarter because the foot's wider than normal. So that's 13 and a quarter. Then I've added two and three quarters for the width of the heels. Okay, that's how wide the heels are. So that's for the bar to go across the heel. Okay, and then I've added three inches for the length of the frog. Comes out to 19 inches. But I'm going to roll the toe with a hammer quite hard. So I backed it off to 18 and a half. Does that make, that make sense? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by bending the end of the bar, basically the length of the frog, okay, at right angles. And then I'm going to bend it on top of itself to get some, enough material to make a solid heart bar because it's very narrow, the, the bar stock. So, bend the length of the frog at right angles. Fold it back on itself. And because it's going to be an inverted bar, you don't want to bend it all the way back here or it's going to stick out. And you see it, it's, it comes to the front edge of the web. And that way, I'll have a bar like that shape so, it doesn't, so it's not dangerous to the horse and the rider. Now you don't need to put a lot of a lot of flux on, okay? But it's best to put the flux on a hot shoe with color in it. Okay? So it needs to be up to coming up to an orange heat before you put the flux on. If you put it on too soon, it normally just falls off and gets crunchy. So if you put it on when it's orange, you'll see it melt right away onto the surface. And it's important to be patient. What you find is I'm making one right now. I'd make two in about five minutes longer than making one. 
I expect to take maybe 20, 25 minutes to make, a, make this shoe, 20. I'd make, make a pair in five minutes longer because I'd be alternating my heat. Now what I do, when I bring it out, I'll give it a couple of taps on each side just to get it tacked together. And then I immediately start work on the scarves, the edges, to get those in. And the one I want to get in is at the back, at the back where it's folded back there. If I get that one in hard, the whole thing can't move, even if it's not welded up at the point. If I weld the point and I don't weld the back, the whole thing's moving. So it's important to get that back corner welded up at this first time. What's the important thing with welding is equalizing temperature. It's bringing up, up so the outside of the metal and the inside of the metal are all the same color as the same as the forge. If you look into the forge and the forge is brighter than the, the inside of the material, the core of the material, it's not going to weld very well. They're equalizing temperature. The people that know that best, the people who've used oxacetylene for welding. If you don't equalize temperature, it doesn't weld, it doesn't run. And once I've got it tacked, then I'm going to start to forge it out into a heart bar to fit the frog. Get that corner in there, then it can't move. That corner in there. I've got the shape coming into it now. Shape the back of the bar for the inverted bar. Okay, so in one heat I've got most of the weld and I've got it mostly drawn out. And it would be just as good a job if you had a welder and t went and welded one in. You know, I'm not going to be a prima donna and say you can't do just as good a job welding one in. I've just never been able to bring myself to buy the welder. And I'm going to have to hot fit them anyway, so the forge is going. Forge is pulled out, anvil's pulled out. What I'm going to think of now is how much I need to bend this bar. What well, you got to visualize in your mind, okay, this is a hind foot, but the shape of the foot. The bar's got to come down the center. So I've got to close this up. This up here, so this angle is correct for the heel angle. Okay, so this would be a rounded shoe, but you can see right now, if I just put this branch there, can you see the, that's facing over here? That needs closing together, and it's visualizing that. Even if you take the old shoe off the foot and put it down there, it'll give you an idea of what distance that needs to be. And it's thinking like that the whole way through the process. Otherwise, you're going to get to the end, and you're going to have to really rework the shoe. I'm trying to make a shoe that's going to be pretty close to that foot first or second time. Close up the heel. Put a bit of bend in for the heel as well. I'm, think I'm thinking of the bend right there. I want. No, it, it needs, it's quite a wide heel on him. So we don't want it too narrow. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bend the other heel, bend the toe, bring the shoe together. So maybe another one to two heats, the shoe should be ready to weld. Visualize about where the center of the toe is. Okay. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the two branches at once. So I'll scar scarf this. I'll bend this ready for my work, my uh, scarf. And Bring it forward so it's going to be an inverted heel. Scarf it. Scarf that corner there. And I've got the heels coming into, uh, so there's nothing going to be sticking back in the center of the heels. That sounds better. Okay, now I'm going to have one heat to shape it up before I nail hole it. Roll in the edge of the shoe. Make it easy. What I do, I have two thicknesses of pritchels. I have a thinner pritchel for my smaller nails and a bigger pritchels for my, so I can pick them up pretty easily. What we'll do, we'll shoe up the hind, ho hind end of the horse with machine-made shoes. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll make it out of a machine-made. You know, it's important that we can we can do our job any way we want. You can bring him there. I punched it out and there's a little bubble on the outside. So you didn't set any down, eh? No, I don't. My punch is short, it gets hot. 
So what I do now, I set, the, I set my clips. I'm gonna set them slowly, but I pull the bubble back over the edge. I'm gonna just stop at the, that point, okay, so you can look at it. But I pull the bubble back over the edge. And if you look what I've got there, at this point, it's almost identical to what I have with the hammer. So there's two stages to a bob punch clip. The first point of pushing it out and then setting it back over the edge like you would to the same stage as a hammer clip. And from this point, now you're drawing from a hammer clip. What people forget is to take it to this stage, they have the bubble and they try and draw the bubble into a clip. You've got to set that bubble over the edge first so you've got your material to draw your clip. I draw the clip, I've got start at the base, constantly working to the point, but not rushing to the point. Then I can pretty much get the clip shape without having to rasp it. If, what people tend to do is to rush to the point. Okay, a bit too much frog pressure. Just a bit too much frog pressure and I need to set my clips. But we're down. I'm pulling back to set my clips first. I'm setting those clips, okay? See, I got a nice flat frog pressure. Pretty much down. With that much of a gap. With that much of a gap. You couldn't do it with a laminitic horse. But this isn't a laminitic horse, this is a crushed heel horse. And this frog is going to be transferred up in here. It's not going to happen tomorrow, it's going to happen now. It's like you putting on a shoe with a rock in it. It's not going to take you two weeks to decide you've got a rock in it. You notice that what I'm doing, I'm really blocking those heel nails down. And you see there's still a bit of a gap there, but that'll be gone by this afternoon. But now we'll drop it down and we'll see if we've got too much frog pressure. Don't give me railroad tracks between the nails. I do get upset with that. About the length of the clinch. Right at the length of the clinch. I don't want a big hole showing when I get finished. But when the nail falls over, you know, you can't, can't feel it. No. I wouldn't expect a tightness. Dilton will tell you the next time you see him, but I would say no. That, will set, that amount there will settle and it won't cause him any problems. I'm not, no, I'm not saying that, but I'm out of here tomorrow, okay? Yeah. But I, I do care, you know what I mean? That's why I don't go so aggressive with the trimming and end up making them, you know, 